There. Uh, yes. I work for Proton Mail. I just wanted to ask a generic question for Bitcoin. Proton okay. Mail is awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, do you believe Bitcoin can survive government intervention and or regulation on a global scale? Like, let's say, the big countries decide. I have never seen global collaboration between countries on regulating anything. So, if the governments of the world can't get their ass into gear to deal with global warming, that is literally a threat to the tiny little blue lifeboat we are hurtling through the cosmos on, you think they're going to get together and agree on Bitcoin? Especially when, strategically, they're all thinking, well, if Bitcoin happens, I'm fucked. <coughs> But those guys are more fucked than me. <laughs> so maybe if we let it happen, it can cause them to have a currency problem before it causes us to have a currency problem, and then we win. Um, and I'm not joking about that because I'm pretty sure that would be a, the kind of calculation that you would see in a lot of countries that um, are thinking about whether right, Bitcoin should be regulated. And so they regulate it. So what? So what? What are they going to do? Threaten people with death if they use Bitcoin? They already do that in some countries. And guess what people will do? They'll use Bitcoin, and then when the policeman comes, they'll bribe the policeman in Bitcoin. <laughs> and up the chain it goes until the head of the state is stuffing a wallet full of Bitcoin. The bottom line is that in countries where the rule of law matters, money is a form of speech. Freedom of association, freedom of expression, freedom of speech protects political expression through currency. In the United States, we put that into a United States Supreme Court decision on the Citizens United that said you can't regulate campaign contributions because money is speech. So in countries where the rule of law matters, you pick that fight head-on with Bitcoin, and we're going to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. Do you know how many lawyers per day Mark Andreessen can hire? Um, and the problem is that they may lose. And losing on a decision that says Bitcoin is protected speech is much worse than the status quo, which is kind of gray. So that's not going to happen. And in countries where the rule of Putin is the rule of law. Ban Bitcoin, they say, and nobody gives a damn. Bitcoin is evil. Really? You say it's evil. I better look into this. <laughs> because every time you say something is evil, it's because it's good for me and bad for you. and I don't like you. <laughs> this is happening in Venezuela right now. You're like, Bitcoin is the currency of terrorists, pedophiles, extremists, and criminals. Don't pay attention to our 550% inflation rate. <laughs> and please leave your money in the currency of choice and go with us to the bottom as hostages of our insane policies. And what are some obviously technically literate, a very tiny percentage of the population in Venezuela are probably now thinking, really, hmm, I should look into this. Yes. Who's got the microphone? I think over here was the next one. Yes, go ahead. Yes. 30, 40, 50 years in the future, uh, our dreams or visions. Is some space change going to happen? Will a nation state be there? Something like this? <coughs> I try not to make predictions in Bitcoin exceeding 30, 40 days into the future. Because the best way to be correct is to not make a prediction. Uh, because the future is very harsh uh, when it comes to predictions. Um, the worst part is that if you make a really stupid prediction, you will go down in the history books, like that guy who said the world will only ever need one computer, and that guy who said electricity is a fad for the Paris Fair and will disappear as soon as we dismantle the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Wrong on two counts in the history books. Um, I can't do a prediction out to 30, 40 years. I do know that the nation-state, as a system of organization, is being severely threatened by network-centric organization on a global scale. Today, the ten largest populations in the world 
Four of them are nation-states, six of them are internet applications. Facebook is the most populous concentration of human beings on the planet. Instagram, Snapchat, WeChat, etc., etc. Follow that. Somewhere down there is China, India, and then in seventh place, the United States. Um, so the world has already changed. Whether that will affect nation states, we'll see. Uh, one of the people in Bitcoin who's really interesting and has some interesting ideas, Balaji Srinivasan, who is the uh, CEO of 21 Inc. once told me, the future of politics is not left versus right, it's land versus cloud. And most of the world still lives on land, but some of us now live in cloud. And land wants to keep us tied up and tax us based on where we live, but we don't live in any specific place. We travel by air all over the world. And this is going to be the dominant battle of the future, the global community of the networked versus the landlocked feudalist past. We'll see. Hello, yes. uh, my name is Martin, and I have a question to you. Andreas, uh, what's your personal view on Halloween this year and its impact to uh, accentuate and difficulty? Sorry, what was the... Halloween, okay. accentuate... The halving, difficulty. yes. The great halving of 2016. So, for, to explain for those of you who are not quite familiar with this, every four years the amount of subsidy in each block decreases by 50 percent. So we started with 50 Bitcoin per block. We're now in the era of 25. We are going to enter the 12 and a half era, approximately on July 22nd, 2016. One of the interesting things about Bitcoin is that we know what the monetary policy will be in 2140. And with the Federal Reserve, we don't know what the monetary policy will be this Friday. Um, or with any of the other central banks. Uh, although I have a premonition that it will probably involve more stimulus and more printing money. because That hasn't worked a hundred times, but the hundred and first, it probably will. Um, so what happens in the happening? As I said, miners prepay electricity in many parts uh, of the mining ecosystem. That's not universal, but it is one of the characteristics of the mining community, which actually has some really serious implications on their decision-making process, because it sunk capital. Um, secondly, we've now achieved a, a situation in mining where we've seen from the CPU to the GPU to the FPGA to the ASIC, increases of 100 or 1,000-fold performance increases, until we accelerated straight into Moore's Law. And that's a wall, because 16 nanometers, done. Okay, now where do we go? Now we slow down to 2x increases every 18 months. And everyone can get the same chip. And there's no advantage in pre-ordering, and you no longer have to switch chips every three to six months. So therefore, capital connections to silicon fabrication, centralization of purchasing no longer matter. And this has started happening at the beginning of this year, and we will go into the halvening with a situation where there will be the haves and the have-nots, those who have 16 nanometer and those who don't. And those who do not have 16 nanometer will find themselves unprofitable very quickly, and the rest will not. So we'll see. Um, I predict the price will go up and down. <laughs> and then it will probably go up and down again, because the primary driver of price is still, by a great extent, sentiment. So the happening is coming. I think Bitcoin will go up. Bye, 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 bye. Everybody else sees it. They're like, bye, 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 bye. Everybody bye. It's great. Oh no, I'm not too sure. I'm a bit worried. Sell, 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 sell. <laughs> and up and down we go. It's going to be a roller coaster. Volatility will probably increase. We, we're in a period of pretty low volatility. We have been for at least a year now, um, where the volatility of 2011 and 2013 is in our past. We've been relatively stable for a tiny six billion dollar global currency, but we're going to see increased volatility. And so. My suggestion is take a deep breath, relax, don't try to play the casino unless you are an experienced uh, stock gambler, in which case good luck to you. 
um, sit back, relax, watch the fireworks, and read the news about how Bitcoin is dead or about to die because of the halving, and then wait until right after when Bitcoin is not yet dead. <laughs>